All right, guys. So I wanted to. I don't know if you have seen the final reports in the blackboard. Uh, did you guys have a chance to look at the, them? I just briefly. Okay. So just to go over them quickly, uh, and uh, I know there's one group, one group, another group. You are so four group representation, yeah. right? So we have a one, at least one person from each group. Your members are in Sparks, yeah. right? Yeah, I want to spark. Yeah. We don't want should be coming. Okay. All right. So, um, so we have two final reports due the end of the class, and uh, we don't have a final exam, but you're required to, as you know, we have five assignments. The fifth assignment is like a final del deliverable of the first four assignments. But the fifth assignment will be accompanied by these two reports that we would like you to work on. And I'm talking about these right now because this is uh, an assignment that you have to actually take record of and uh, pay attention to throughout the semester. So it's not like an assignment you can do in the last week. So the first report uh, is about uh, use of Eon Colosseum. Uh, you cannot see it there, um, but I don't know if you can. Okay. All right. So we had a quick introduction to Eon Colosseum. I believe uh, you have downloaded and started working with it, at least experimenting with it. Um, as you know, it's a multi-user online technology platform with virtual components to it. Uh, I explained it to you that it's not used for BIM collaboration, but we're, experimented in the, we're experimenting in the class. So what you guys are going to do is understand the functions and the features of the tool, which is basically a virtual meeting place with, where you can have your avatars. And it's, it's for presentations, sharing of files, and being in the same environment virtually. But what we want to do is you to go through the importing process, and the process is outlined and it's in the, it's in the blackboard. And take your building to Eon Colosseum, and go there with your avatars, and walk around or walk in your building, and, uh, and use it for virtual collaboration, basically, not for desktop sharing, but for kind of building sharing. And um, so this report, and uh, the expectation is you will use Eon at different intervals during the semester, not just at the end or at the beginning. Um, so the report, we would like you to basically report your experience. So the functions and features you use in Eon, the tasks that you use Eon for, uh, pros and cons of using an immersive environment, like what has worked, what has not worked. I, I'm not expecting this. I mean, I'm not expecting you guys to solve the Eon virtual world problem, but I want you to experiment and think creatively about it. Uh, how frequently you have used, uh, is there any unique ways of using it? Uh, because, uh, as I said, it's not been used for this purpose, but you might, I have an idea how I would like you guys to use it, but maybe you figured out another way that actually helped your team collaboration. Um, who used what feature from your group? Who initiated the use? For what reason you have used and how long? And some of the lessons learned uh, about the use of Eon for virtual BIM meetings and how can Eon change collaboration in the construction industry? Uh, the last item is compare Eon with traditional collaboration tools like uh, videos, auto sharing, um, file sharing. What I want you to do here is think a little bit creatively. So this is, in a way, the research component of the class. So you're, you're getting exposed to a new piece of technology which could be used in the future for BIM. So you guys are not here to learn what the industry is using only. You guys are also here to see what might happen in the industry, what might be carried to the industry in the next five years. So I want you to guide, you, you to have an open mind and experiment with this. And, uh, and it's okay. I don't want you to say in your report, 
worked wonderfully and it's a great tool. I'm, I'm not, we're not working for you. What I am interested in is your unique ideas and your unique evaluation of how a virtual BIM collaboration tool can, could be used for here in this class or in, for BIM collaboration purposes. I mean, I'm okay if you say it doesn't work <laughs> and list out why it doesn't work and maybe tell what should happen on top of what you have right now for something like this to work. You can say that I don't see any benefits of it. Yeah, if you justify it, I'm okay with that. But you can say these are the benefits, but I see these are the additional benefits. If it worked this way, this could it could change the it could re it could change the practice of collaboration between different disciplines, or it could change the interference checking practice because you're not looking at a screen. You are with your avatar walking in your building, or it could change maybe how the design is facilitated or evaluated. So these are the things that uh, we're interested in. So I have the evaluation criteria, completeness of the deliverables, able to analyze and present the data, demonstration of well-taught, well-defined explanations, uh, professionalism with the deliverables, presentation, organization, and delivery. I'm expecting you guys to present your report. Um, I think it's scheduled like uh, the exam day of the class as a team you will come here and present your experience and this is going to be the part of it and 20% of your grade is going to be uh, coming from this report and your presentation so that is the fun part so you have another report and this is uh, yes please. So were you able to, uh, you were talking about maybe doing a field trip down there Cleon, yeah. Were you able to set that up, or should we just? I actually didn't uh, try, to be honest with you, but I, I can definitely arrange that. Okay. I don't know how many of you are interested. Maybe we should send an email out. Yeah, see how many people would uh, yeah. definitely do it. I don't know if anybody else wants to, but yeah, we... I'm going to. Okay. That would be a very, very interesting uh, trip, actually. Definitely. Uh, what would be interesting is actually once you, after after the second assignment, once you try it first, you get some experience with working with it, and then we go there and you might ask your questions and you can try to understand what other solutions there are. I don't know, if Glenn, if you know this company, Eon Realities. Um, this is the software that we're using in the class. It's a virtual meeting place where students can go to this place uh, with their avatars and we're trying to import their BIM models and they're going to evaluate the, their BIM models in the virtual world. But the company has hardware and software, the software we're using. Um, hardware, they have the cube. I don't know if you guys have heard about the cube, uh, which uh, is basically um, the cave you were talking about? Cube, cave, yeah. They, they call different names where there are screens, like four screens or uh, five screens of projection right. where you wear your uh, 3D uh, glasses and you actually have a 3D immersed experience of walking in a building or walking in a city. They have 3D screens, they have um, 3D meeting platforms where like I could be here I mean you could see me through a screen but I could be somewhere else but it just is as realistic as I am here actually so interesting uh, so I will definitely follow up on that one okay uh, so the second report uh, is uh, the core of this class which is uh, your again your reporting of you I, we would like you to report your experience throughout the class and there's three parts I guess uh, to it uh, how to work collaboratively in a beam environment so this is one area that I would like you to address. So I want you to define methods and implementation strategies for successful BIM collaboration, uh, determine the software capabilities that are used for collaboration purposes, define team characteristics needed to achieve successful BIM collaboration, determine the interoperability issues between software applications. This is going to come up in the, in the later part of the class where you are going to move from 
a BIM environment to the scheduling software or estimating software. Investigate if the problems you encounter in the entire, entire collaboration process are also actual real-world problems in the industry. So uh, there is the software part, but also there is the social team part of things. So it's not just like this is the software, these are the features we use, this is like what's working, that's not what we're work what, what not working. And I'm I'm I would like you to actually honestly report what's happening in your team as well. Like we have a range to team, have three uh, architects and one structural modeler and then we had to shift roles or we tried to work share the files but it didn't work because of this reason this is the new uh, process that we have adapted so it's basically a narrative of your experience um, but i want you to think critically about uh, some of the issues and look at what you have done uh, good or bad and analyze what could be done on top of what you have done to improve the collaboration within a BIM environment. Uh, so the lessons learned I think we covered, what are some of the lessons learned throughout the semester, how is the experience you acquired in this course different than regular, a regular BIM course that deals with software training skills, so this is uh, an input uh, to the instructors to improve this course in the future. And then uh, collaboration is, uh, is, is a big part of the class, as well as the coordination of disciplines. So the level of detail that you have specified, uh, what are, um, does the level of detail vary depending on the tasks being involved, if so, how? Uh, you have worked uh, as you have played roles, or you you would have played roles at the end of the semester. So you have the architect, the structural engineers, cost estimator, scheduler. So who should provide what information at which stage? And uh, who are the contributors, data contributors to each uh, task? Um, we would like you to recommend a BIM model structure and a specification framework which represents your proposed level of detail, product structure, etc. to address various needs from design, construction, through facilities management. And what are some of the ideal case, sta ideal case standards for BIM quality control and for integrating all disciplines information? So this is another report that summarizes your experience in the classroom, coordination and collaboration perspective. So both reports are due the 12th of uh, May. And again, I have the evaluation criteria pretty much the same. But these two reports uh, in total make up 40% of your uh, uh, grade. grade. And I think the last assignment is 10% of your grade, so 50% of your grade. I mean, it makes sense because these are like the results of your hard work throughout the semester that you're delivering. But uh, I hope you understand why I'm going through the details of these two reports uh, fairly early. I mean, not as early as I would like it to be, but fairly early in the process. And I would like you guys to communicate with your team members who are not present here. This is something you need to start working on now. I mean, not writing the report, but at least a proper documentation of your experiences. Does that make sense? All right, did we solve our... I think maybe we did. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a little experimentation. So, so you guys were with Glenn, uh, I guess, two weeks ago when I wasn't here. And uh, he's back. <laughs> and he's going to cover... Uh, uh, a little work sharing, yeah, work a little sharing. structural modeling. We get all sorts of things on the yeah, agenda. A today. little bit of MEP, right? Just uh, very yes. briefly, we mentioned. Exactly. So we're going to see actually if I can get this out. So where are I you can. guys in your modeling process? Can one person report uh, the team uh, yeah, progress? Yeah, we started. Uh, I almost finished. Uh, the first floor, mm -hmm. and then started the second floor. Modeling, mm -hmm. uh, picture modeling. Mohamed Uzes uh, started the uh, structural modeling, and uh, the guy in the UV. Yeah, our team member. Pedro? No, no, the, oh. the other one. The oh, yes. Uh -huh. 
I believe he started this kitchen. Just a younger Petrom was this Petrom and Mohammed is uh starting in uh we're starting the uh, the, mm -hmm. the structure. Okay. But the they both of them are so busy for his part. Alright, so you're doing the front loading, hopefully they're going to do that. Uh, I, I'm better in architectural uh -huh. part, so I, I, I enjoy uh -huh. working on that part. All right. Yeah, because it's a good good exercise for my you know, other tasks. Okay. But I, the assignment is due the 22nd. You should definitely be talking to your scheduling person on the Texas side. Yeah. And model accordingly, actually. Yeah. If course, you're modeling yeah. without his input, we are in contact. Okay. Yeah. Right. Very good. In your group? Yes, we have uh, architectural mm -hmm. models about 80% complete. Oh, wow. Structural models about 80% complete. Wow. The They're ahead of you. Yeah. The, well, <laughs> um, the uh, estimate, the square footage estimate is complete. Mm. And working on about probably 40% by one okay. uh, and then our initial schedule and premier growth. Okay. So you're in touch with the uh, yes, okay. 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 You guys are almost uh, ahead of schedule, it looks like, right? Yeah, two more weeks we're, try we're trying to make up for something at once, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, we're about to say we have like 80% for control. Eighty percent for structural, and we've been talking to the schedule and, and the estimate to get the input for the model. Okay. So, like the first last two weeks, me and Diego, we were like working so hard on the modeling. Uh -huh. And then, like, we we plan to get it done by this weekend, uh -huh. so that we can give it like the whole the model to the schedule to work more detail. Okay. Oh, very good. So how are you guys? Uh, actually, uh, we, we first uh, what we do is to establish a central model because we want to make sure how we collaborate first. And then everyone is drawing from the central model and we synchronize it together to the same model. Wow. And wow. John and You I, guys are all working with make files, right? Yes. You do? Link files, not like central server like they do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not okay. So you guys are doing it. Yeah. Right, good. And uh, John and I are the architects, and you know we are working on the first and fourth, second and fourth together. And Nathan is working on the structure model, mm -hmm. and we we have arranged to finish everything you know the model by Thursday tomorrow. And you know we are pretty almost done with that. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow. Yes, Thursday. Mm -hmm. And. At the same time, you know, when we are building the model, and David and Su Yang, they are working on scheduling and estimating together because we think, you know, when we bring them together to this project, you know, scheduling and estimating are very closely connected to each other because we need to divide the work, uh, work, work breakdown, work structure breakdown. And, you know, we already did that, you know, even before we started the model, because we think about what we need to do. And, you know, so after this, we can extract the content directly, and you know, to put it together with the yeah, and I think we should. How is central model working for you? It works really well, actually, because, you know, we use a job box, and then, you know, we form a folder and put a central model there. So everyone, you know, and because we share the documents through the job box, and everyone can have access to that. And the first time when I use it, I need to save a local file, you know, just as a backup. And then that's the time when I need to synchronize, you know, on purpose. And afterwards, you know, when I, after the first time, and every time when I do it, I save it, and it's automatically saved to the file directly. Yeah. Actually, let me give you one caution about doing it with Dropbox, because this is sort of, Dropbox is a beautiful tool, and we use it for an awful lot of different things, but it's a little bit different than actually being directly connected to a shared file server in that you sort of have a local copy and it kind of syncs quietly in the background to it. So yeah. what will happen is, as long as only one of you mm -hmm. using the Dropbox are syncing at a time, you'll be in good shape. Uh -huh. Be very careful about it. Two people are working at the same time what will happen is if Dropbox tries to sync from both sides, uh -huh. the files can sort of get to be a little bit of a mixed mess in that's the middle. So that's that why. Well, so far, you know, John and I worked 
at the different time. Yeah. So that's as, as long as you do that, it's going to work. Yeah, and that's the first thing. And then the structure model. I think a man's thing working on a circuit model with the same grade. Yeah. You know, so it's just one demand and the yeah. share and models. Yeah, I think we are yeah. linking the architecture with the you know structure model. Yeah, that's but for architecture models, since we are also dividing into different sure. sections, that's what we think. You know, at different. Sure. So just watch out for this thing with Dropbox, because what will happen? Because this is one of the classic things that will get you in trouble. Yeah. If, if you want to keep on doing that, what we were messing around with here today with all the trouble setting it up was getting a shared, uh -huh. actually a shared Windows folder where it's, it's not through the Dropbox, but it actually you're physically writing the same file location. Yeah. That's the safest thing. But you know, keep on going, but just watch out, because that, that's, that's the place where we usually sort of fall off and get ourselves in trouble, is what well, I'm doing with Dropbox in the background. Yeah, one of the advantages. You know, our team has, yeah. compared to others, that like John and I work directly in the same lab. Yeah. So every time when I am, when I was working on the model, I would let him know. And when he was working on the model, he would let me know. Sure. So we always know now who is working on the sure. model there. Well, yeah, that's kind of a, it's collaboration, but not like in this true sense, where you yeah. don't know where the other person is and what the other person is doing. Uh, so be careful when you don't get uh, more than one Just be careful. If, if we ever do get to a problem where there is a coordination problem because of that, just keep your central, your locals around. Because we could always say if something happens to the central and it gets messed up, we can make one of the locals, the last one, the, the best one, the new central to kind of replace it. But it'll it'll happen, and you won't hit it until if, if you both try to synchronize sort of at the same time. And it's really actually async. It just looks like a sync. That's where it's in trouble. Is it possible that we two work at the same time, and then one person sync it? You know, when I'm still working on that, and afterwards I sync it. You know, the style is that possible? But the, the problem, and here's what happens with Dropbox, which is so sort of good and bad at the same time. Yeah, you'll you'll be on local, and you'll sync to your local copy of uh -huh. the central. Okay, and then it'll quietly start syncing with your your partner's local copy of the central, which sounds really strange. But okay. what happens is it's in that little bit until the two versions, yours and your partner's on your local machines, actually get back into perfect sync. You're in that little danger zone right there. Where are you going? So now it's it's possible. Now I'm not gonna dissuade you from doing it, but just watch out, because that's actually one of the ones that'll classically sort of get you in trouble. It's just really not designed to work with Dropbox. Yeah, you're fine with linking. Linking's all okay, but just be a little bit cautious with this database thing because yeah, it just there's so many files it just takes a few minutes for all the syncing to happen between the different machines, and that that's where the hole opens up that you might drop into. Yeah, okay. but it's pleasing to hear you're trying something yeah. different. Um, and uh, on that note, please make sure that you take uh, backups. Oh. That happened last time. The team entirely lost their. Uh, I mean, they had to go a couple of weeks uh, before, but they lost, I think, about 10 days of work. So it, it happens. It happens oh, yeah. in practice as well. So Exactly. So if you ever run into one of those holes where it looks like you lost a lot of work, stop. Don't panic. <laughs> yeah. Breathe. Contact one of us and let's talk about it, because there's usually a way to get some of it back. But the key is, don't do too many other things. Because there's little threads that we can try to recover and pull back in, but it's it's usually because I can. As soon as you run into some big old problem, pause and see if you can get some help. And yeah, I'll we'll try and get you out of that stuff. I, okay. I hate it when people like lose ten days of work. It's like oh. that was with Archicad, and mm. we were using the BIM, their new BIM, the BIM server. server. Yeah, which should work and very, our, very well. No, but our server yeah. uh, computer failed. Oh. Yeah, so it wasn't uh, That's even, yeah, the hardware fried or something. No, no, exactly. And we couldn't recover it. It's no. the danger when it's all in the cloud somewhere and then the yeah. cloud goes away. Well, our cloud was not as reliable or robust as it should be, but... I'm with you. It happened. <laughs> exactly. Okay, you, you, right. you good on check-ins? Yes, yes. Everybody is on board with two final assignments, and do you guys have any questions? Do you understand what they're about? And all things? Okay. Fantastic.